Hey, I'm back and you're back. So I'm really happy that you're watching this again. This is lesson 5.4, the next sense on our list, hearing. So if you open your book to page 126, we can get started. So let's do that. Okay, so here you have a picture of the ear. And probably this is the only part that you recognize, but there's so much more. In fact, the ear has three parts. And the first part is the outer ear. And you can see it goes all the way till about this side. So this entire area is the outer ear. And in the outer ear, you see, first of all, the pinna. And the pinna is just the fleshy cartilage thing that is your uh, ear on the outside, the oorschelp. And so then we have the ear canal that goes into your skull and the reason we know it goes into your skull is because here you can see the skull bones over here and so that is just the side of your uh, skull so here we have the ear canal and uh, and then here we have the ear drum that is natürlich die Trommelvlies but the outer ear goes from the pinna to the eardrum but not the eardrum itself and then you can see that the middle ear is this area where you can see the eardrum and three little bones the hammer the anvil and the stirrup hammer aanbeeld stijgbeugel look it has a little shape of a stijgbeugel a stirrup that you put on the horse's saddle right and then you can see the inner ear where we have this huge little, well, this huge thing. It's called the semicircular canals. This is called the cochlea and the auditory nerve. And then the eustachian tube, the buis van Eustachius. Okay, let's talk about all the functions of this ear. All right, so what is exactly the eardrum the eardrum is the one part of your ear that responds that reacts to sound waves geluidsgolven and what it does it starts to vibrate back and forth like this so when a sound comes into your ear it is caught by the pinna which kind of works like a funnel and trechter and it catches all the sounds all the sound waves that come in and they travel into your ear canal and then hit the eardrum the eardrum starts to vibrate and that vibration is given over to three little bones the hammer over here that is attached to the eardrum and that hammer is going to vibrate and move also that ticks upon this anvil that I'm built and that anvil starts to vibrate too and that in return gives its vibration to this thing called the stirrup and these are actually the tiniest three bones in your body they're just a couple of millimeters so then because of this vibration the cochlea which is this part this is uh, at Slakkenhuis in Dutch, and you can see why, look at the shape, that gets and receives the vibration. And what happens is inside the cochlea, there are cells, and those little cells are in a liquid. And those little so cells have hairs on them, and they continue to vibrate as well. And that sound that vibration of the cells turns sound into electrical impulses you remember those because we call them nerve impulses so watch what happens when i play sound <laughs> So why can you hear this? Because right now your pinna was catching that sound, that sound wave traveled through the ear canal and hit the eardrum, the eardrum started to vibrate, the vibration was transmitted to the hammer 
and then transmit it to the anvil, and then transmit it to the stirrup, and then transmit it to the cochlea. Cells inside the cochlea start to vibrate as well and turn sound waves into nerve impulses. Now the nerve impulses then are transmitted to this auditory nerve, the gehoorzenu, and that auditory nerve goes all the way to your brain, upon which your brain realizes, hey, I'm hearing the sound of a guitar. So think about that when I play the sound. So that's how you hear sound. So let's talk about this very strange and special tube called the Eustachian tube. The Eustachian tube is a tiny tube that connects your middle ear to your throat. You can see that on the picture here. Here is your pinna and here we have over here the middle ear and from the middle ear there is a small tube going to your nose and throat area. You can see that here, the same goes for an adult. Here we see it. So what's the use of this? Now the Eustachian tube is something that helps you equalize air pressure from your outer ear to your middle ear. First of all, air pressure is the pressure of all the air particles around us. And Air pressure is everywhere, even inside our ear canal. And currently, right now as you're listening, air pressure is just pushing on your eardrum. Also, sound waves are pushing on your eardrum, but even if I'm quiet, air pressure is still pushing on your eardrum from the outside. But air pressure is also pushing from inside your middle ear and it's pushing on to your eardrum. And here we have the two pressures. So here is the pressure from the outside and here's the pressure from your middle ear and right in between is your um, eardrum. So the pressure of the two is equal, same pressure. So the pressure is so equal that the eardrum can still vibrate because it has no hinder, it's not pushed one way or pushed the other way. Both pressures are equally strong. But have you noticed that when you go into an airplane up there or on a mountain, you start to become deaf. But as soon as you go back down and you land, your ears might actually pop open again. And that has to do with the eardrum not being able to vibrate. And the reason for that is a difference in air pressure. See, what's happening is the air pressure in an airplane is lower than the air pressure on the ground. And that is because in a plane there's just less air particles. There's less air particles as you go higher up into the sky. There's more air particles when you're sitting down at the surface of the earth. So. Here is what's happening in a plane. There's less air pressure in your outer ear and still a lot of air pressure in your middle ear because that is left over from where you were still on the ground. And those two pressures then start to fight it out. Now here's what happens. Remember the eardrum is in the center. This is air pressure from the outside and it's less, less air pressure because it's the pressure from up there in the sky. This is air pressure from when you were still below. And what is happening now? We are in the middle ear here. The middle ear has more pressure, so it pushes onto the stirrup from the inside. And what happens then is your eardrum cannot vibrate anymore. And that feels like being deaf, because if the eardrum cannot vibrate, the hammer, anvil, and stirrup cannot vibrate. The cells in the cochlea don't change the sound into nerve impulses anymore and no nerve impulses or maybe less nerve impulses go to your brain and you just feel deaf. So that's what's happening. So if you swallow or if you chew gum, then your um, 
your jaw starts to work on that you stay kin tube starts to open it up again so that equalizes the pressure and that means that when you do that when you're up in a plane you can still feel and hear the sound instead of feeling deaf your you stay kin tube is then open okay now let's talk about the semicircular canals these one, two, three canals that you see here have nothing to do with hearing. They are part of your ear, but they have nothing to do with hearing. They have to do with balance. And that's because there are tiny hair bundles, well, not really hairs, but cells that look like hairs, inside those canals with liquid. And they start to move around as you move up and down and left and right and all of those things they start to move and give you a sense of balance so that's how you feel that you're falling and you could save yourself by holding on to something so semicircular canals for balance okay this is the end of our lesson on 5.4 hearing please do the questions in your workbook on page 128, assignments 21 till 28. I'm looking forward to seeing your assignments and I'm looking forward to the next lesson again. So until then, have a very nice day and thank you for watching. Bye!